Come Avengers Endgame was a cultural event, a little shutdown. Yeah. <laughs> Marvel Cinematic Reset. Uh, yeah. um, what, what what's it like shooting shooting a film post post that? Well, I mean, it's interesting. I mean, the, the film I shot afterwards with Cherry, but with the same directors, which was really bizarre. I was I was really quite worried that they weren't going to be able to like transition from making a five hundred million dollar film to making a small indie film about a drug addict in Cleveland. But they were they were amazing. And then now we're obviously shooting Spider Man three and. It just feels the same. It just feels like we've picked up right where we left off. You know, they, they still have blue screens and they got loads of money and they, they make these massive movies and I'm hanging from wires all the time. So as far as the actual process of making the film goes, it feels the same. But how about for you? For like, my question for Black Panther is like, when you were making that film, you must have been aware that you guys were sitting on like one of the biggest and most cultural enriching like blockbuster movies of all time. Like, was that something you knew was happening or was it a surprise when it came out? I think it's something that we were aware that was bubbling. I think there was one day we did the waterfall scene and obviously like in between breaks, everyone, everyone just stays on set and it was like just hundreds of people on set. And then we had actual drummers and in between the takes, um, they would play the beat for Snoop Dogg, Drop It Like It's Hot. No way. And then everyone would go, Snoop. Yeah. Like hundreds of people would literally do that. Yeah. And when I saw that, I was like, yeah, this isn't going to be quiet. This isn't, I was like, this is just, yeah. there was just an energy. I think everyone was just so, you felt that everyone felt so privileged to be a part of this moment. It felt like a moment. You felt like, For sure. you felt like, wow, we were able to, to show this world in the way that we see us. And, sure. um, and, and, and it being a, a Marvel superhero film. So you work with the Russo brothers on two very different kinds of films. And yes. so what did they adapt their process? Because obviously, how, 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 what was the budget of um, Cherry? I couldn't tell you. I couldn't. It was, I mean, compared to a Marvel movie and then Avengers movie, like it was, it was like a day's work for a Marvel. It was, yeah. it was less than 200 million. Less than 200 million. Oh yeah, it was way less than 200 million. Yeah. Way less than 200 million. But so you're doing, doing that and like, that's fascinating to have those two different experiences with the same di directors. Yeah, how, how was that process? We didn't really have that much rehearsal time. We did a lot of rehearsal for the voiceover stuff because that really kind of steers the narrative of the story. And we had to get that right before we shot the film because otherwise it wouldn't make sense. They wouldn't marry together. As far as they go as directors on a film set like Cherry and a film set like Avengers, they're just the same, really. And it was just a joy to get to work with them on a much more personal level. I mean, when you're dangling upside down 40 feet in the middle of a battle, they give you notes from like a megaphone. They're like, Tom, look more this way. You need to look that way. And then you do a film like Cherry and you're sitting behind the monitors with the directors and they're, they're nitpicking the most finest detail of your performance. So it's quite nice to have got to know them on a much more personal level. So it was nice to just spend some time with them that wasn't in front of a blue screen with like 3,000 people and I wasn't wearing Lycra, not once, which was really nice. You are in this kind of really fascinating position in your career where you could be movie star, blah, 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 and then you've got this Cherry Lane where you've got like this really indie, personal, intimate story about like darkness of humanity yeah and it's kind of like is it your aspiration to do both i mean i think i will try and do both for as long as people will let me do both you know like i i love making the spider-man films and i think there's often quite a misconception that they're not for me they just seem like indie films with a lot more money they mm. you know we're still having to dig out characters and we're still having to try and figure out a storyline but you just do it in a very very different way but i do foresee that like the future of my career will be doing films more like Cherry and being very selective with the type of work that I do. But at the moment, like, I love making films like Spider-Man, Spider -Man, right? Let's keep it, let's, yes. let's, the elephant in the room. It's a spider in the room. And like, <laughs> you're, you're out, what's that? What's that like? Come on, you're all rolling, like, how has your life changed in a real way? Not like, like, how has your life changed? There's like three stages of your life changing. Yeah, yeah. It's weird, like the audition process was horrible. Like it was like seven months, I think, worth of auditioning. I must have done six auditions and you know what they're like. They just don't tell you anything. 
they just always tell you that you did a great job and they'll be in touch and then six weeks will go by and you're waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting and then eventually I got a um a screen test in Atlanta so I flew out to Atlanta there's me and six other kids and Downey was there so we all tested with Downey which was crazy and and it went so well it went so well like I, I it's the best audition I've ever done like him and I were riffing off of each other. Like my agents have told me that Marvel like you to learn the words exactly. You can't improvise. You can't do any of that. So I learned the words exactly. And then on the first take, Downey just completely changed the scene. So I just, we started riffing with each other. And I, I mean, to sound like a bit of a dick, I rang my mom afterwards and I was like, mom, I think I got it. Like that was like the best audition I've ever done. Like that couldn't have gone any better. And then six weeks go by and I didn't hear anything. Like nothing came through. So I kind of had predicted that I didn't get it and there was all these polls online and I was definitely not the favourite to get the part from the public. And then they called us back and we had to do a, a fight test with Chris Evans. So they flew us back to Atlanta, me and one other guy, and we did this fight scene with Chris Evans, which was so surreal. And by that point, it had been an amazing enough of an experience that if I hadn't got the part, I would have felt like I'd at least achieved something to get to that point. I went out to play golf with my dad. I lost and I was upset. And I remember going on my computer, on my phone and checking Instagram and Marvel had posted a picture of Spider-Man, of like the cartoon. And they said, go to our website to find out who the next Spider-Man is. And by this point, I kind of had assumed I hadn't got it because no one had called me. So I was like, oh, okay. I know, Chris. Yeah. I was like, I'll just go and check. So I got my computer and my dog was sitting next to me. I type in Marvel. Da, 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 da. I've still got the article saved on my computer. I did it and it says, we would like to introduce our new Spider-Man, Tom Holland. I broke my computer because I like, I like flipped up in the air. It fell off my bed. My dog went nuts. I ran downstairs. I was telling my family, I was like, I got it, I got it. I got the part, I got the part. And obviously that was right about the time when Sony had got hacked. So my brother, Harry, who's quite tech savvy, was like, no, 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 no. There's no way that's real. They've been hacked. They would have told you. They would have called you. There's no way they would just put that online. And then my phone started ringing and the studio started calling me and gave me the news and it was all official. And yeah, mate, it was crazy. It was crazy. But the craziest thing is, is that I found out online the same way everyone else did but no one had texted me prior to me finding out. Like of all the people I know that could have texted me, I found out first. It was so bizarre how it happened. On the roof. Hey everyone. And then I got the job, I shot Civil War, which was like a week's work. And then from the moment of shooting Civil War to shooting Spider-Man Homecoming, I was convinced they were gonna fire me. I just, I don't know why. I just, I'd finished the film, Civil War hadn't come out yet, and I just didn't hear anything from anyone. I just finished the film and it kind of like went home, and I was convinced for about a year that they were going to fire me. I don't know why. I can't really explain it. It was awful, but they didn't, obviously. Um, but yeah, it's been a, it's been crazy, mate. It's been the most wild roller coaster, but I've loved it. I've loved every minute of it. It's been amazing. It's amazing. You're a great Spider-Man, man. Amazing, amazing, Thank amazing you, Spider-Man. Mate. I hope that our characters will meet eventually. Hopefully, hopefully we'll have some crossover. Yeah, it's crazy, man. It's mad that like two, two lads from London are like doing all this in Hollywood. It's crazy. It's mental.